in the name of Jesus. Welcome to New Hope for Today. I'm so glad to be able to come into your home to minister the Word of God to you. I know that the Word of God is going to bless you because the Word of God says that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word is God. There's power in the Word to save, heal, deliver, but it also blesses our life. And I know that today you are going to be blessed by the Word of God. May God bless you.
you're close to those that are contrite in spirit god we know that you're here we know that you're in the midst of us and we thank you we're so grateful father we thank you for the move of your spirit we thank you for touching every heart and every life in here bringing life into this place god bringing life into dead areas bringing healing to brokenness god we thank you this morning god we worship you we praise you and we exalt your mighty name alone god we thank you god we thank you something that is so very, very important. When Jesus was crucified, when he went to the cross, he took you and I with him on there. Every one of our sins, our unrighteousness, everything about us was nailed on that cross. Amen. His blood, his blood comes to wash away your sins. Amen. I don't know about you, but I thank the Lord for that every day. What, a, what an awesome God. Yes, give him a big praise. But, but there's, there's always been a controversy to this because after Jesus resurrected from the dead, he began to appear to different people and then he appeared to 500. 
These were people that had met, had met him before he was even crucified. And the Bible tells us that not everybody believed it was him. But some did. Now, I want to say something to you. It's the same problem we have today. Sometimes we see the Spirit of the Lord moving in the church. And there are some of us, we're good people. We, we, want, to, we want to serve the Lord. But some of us, right away we, we say, I don't think that was real. I don't think that was him. See, but, but you gotta realize something, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you there in just a moment. The, the spirit of the Lord has always been involved. If you go to the book of Genesis, Chapter 1, you'll find there where the Bible says, the Spirit of the Lord hovered over the deep, or the face of the deep. He came down to check out everything and see what had to be done. He, he's always been involved. If you read the whole Old Testament, you'll find the Spirit of the Lord involved. He, 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 he was involved differently than he is today. Back in the Old Testament, the Spirit of God would come upon a prophet or a king. He, came, he was upon King David. If I smell, tell me. <laughs> I'm just playing with him. But imagine this. He, he would come, he'd use a man, and then leave. Are you with me? That's why when, when, when a prophet would come into town and they saw him wearing the girdle, the belt, the, the leather belt that he wore, that all prophets wore, when, when they see him walk into town, they knew who he was, and they knew he had a word, sometimes for good and sometimes for bad. But then when the Spirit of God was done using them, he would leave. But in the New Testament, everything you see happening in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, you see God giving us the pattern. Starting from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. When, when Jesus went to the Jordan River, the first thing John the Baptist said, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. He was pointing to Jesus. Because they used to sacrifice lambs or rams. He was a, a, a male lamb, a ram. Uh, you, you remember when Abraham and Isaac went up to the mountain and he looked and there was a ram cut in the thicket. It was a symbol of who Jesus was coming to take the place of Isaac. Everything you see from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you find examples of what's going to happen or should happen to the believer. Jesus did not start his ministry. He did not start doing what he was doing. Yes, he was 12 years old. He started teaching in the temple. And I got to say all that because I always got some Bible scholars that will come at me. Okay, but he wasn't performing miracles or all the other stuff that came with it. It wasn't until after he went to the cross. 
he got filled with the Holy Ghost in the River Jordan. And the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord came upon him and stayed upon him and didn't leave. Stood there. And it was because of that, that power, that anointing that came on him that Jesus was able to move and do every miracle he did under the leading and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, you got to hear me, church. Are you with me? He, he came to show us. He's teaching us. That's why it's, it's important for you to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Not just for stories, but to understand that if he did this with Jesus, Jesus wants to do this with you. All right? It wasn't until after the cross, until after Calvary, that Jesus knew he was going back to heaven. He was going back to heaven. He wasn't, he wasn't going to stay here. And he appeared to his disciples. They were, they were with fear. Just like some of you, you're afraid that your family will find out you're in church. I've heard, of, I've heard all kinds of stuff. There, there's, there's some of us that, you know, we, we won't say anything about the Lord because we're afraid they'll think we're a fanatic. Or, or we go on and on with different excuses. But, but listen to me. Look at me here this morning. Jesus died for you and me. Amen. But listen to me. He forgave us. He cleansed us. Amen. But listen to me. But he also did it so you could experience the greatest experience you would ever have in life. Give him the biggest praise. Jesus. You've seen some of the women here sometimes in the service. The Lord will use them to bring a message in tongues. Some, some women or some men, I, I, I say mostly women. It's mostly the women that are the brave ones. I'm I'm serious. I'm serious. Men always sit back. They want to, you know, they got that macho role. <laughs> you know, and they want to sit back and, and, and I got to check this out first. I, you know, I don't want to, you know. But, but checking things out first doesn't make it real for you. See, you got to experience. It's an experience, a spiritual experience that God gives every single person. And, and look what he tells the disciples. He, he, he interrupts them. They're, they're, in, a, they're in a room. They're, they're in a place hiding. Because they were afraid that, that the Romans would find them and kill them. Now, you've got to understand that the Roman Empire at that time was in charge of Israel. They were in control. They were there. Uh, they were the government there. They were everything there. And, and so, uh, you know, it's just like today, after we left Afghanistan, the, 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 the Taliban, everybody went in there and took over. Well, they're in control now. Okay? That's what was happening in Israel. So they, they were afraid to come out because they would be killed. Because they, had, they were followers of Jesus. Everybody saw these, these well, there was 11 men now. That they saw them with him. And they were afraid that they would target them and kill them. All right? Are you with me, church? Now, now look at this. Look over here at me. The flesh, the flesh, your carnal person, allows fear to control them. Some of you sometimes have fear of getting to the altar 
Well, you know, yeah, it was okay, it was good, but, you know, yeah, I, I see. No, 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 listen, you, you've got to experience God. Yeah. You, you have to experience the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It, it's not, it's, listen, listen to me, it's not just church. If that's all it was, let me tell you, the whole world's going to heaven. But that's not the truth. That, that's not the truth. The truth is, you've got to experience Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. He came from heaven. Listen to me. Jesus said these words. He says, I have to go or he can't come. Who's he talking about? He's talking about the Holy Spirit. And the, when the Holy Spirit comes, he says, He's going to testify of me. He's going to take my place and do the work that, that, that I was doing here. He said the difference is going to be that now he's not, going to, he's not just going to be around you. He's going to be in you. He's not just coming and going. He's coming to stay. The Holy Spirit. All right? Are you with me, church? Now, now look at this. I want to I I say this because I want, you to, I, want you to, I want you to grab this. Well, pastor, do I have to speak in tongues? Yes. Some people tell no, you don't. You just leave it alone. You don't have to do none of that. No. No. no, listen to me. You can have an experience of salvation with the Lord. But when you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, listen to me. When you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, the evidence of that baptism is your prayer language. That's what the Bible says. And you and I have to believe the Word of God. We're not here making up our own philosophies or anything. All right? You have to speak in that heavenly language. Now, not everybody speaks the same language. Not everybody. And, and, and let, me, let me clear something for you. A lot of people speak a language that's from here, from earth, from another country, from another nation, from Africa, different places that we don't even know. And then it could be from heaven. A heavenly language. Is there anybody here with me? All right. But listen to me. I'm trying to, I'm trying to take the fear away from you. Don't be afraid of the Holy Spirit. He is the greatest friend you will ever have in your whole life. The greatest friend. You know, there, there's no one, no one like Jesus. All right? Are you with me? And, and so many, well, I, that's not for me. I don't want that. Look, look, look at this. Why, why the Holy Spirit? Why can't you just go to the cross and, okay, here I am, Lord, save me. Okay? Because you're dealing with flesh. Let me give you this. When you're really walking in the Spirit, there's no room for hatred. Why Campo? Why? Because the, the, the author, the finisher of love, the Bible says God is love. He, he not hatred, he not all this stuff. Even though you'll read in the Old Testament where he'll say, and he hated this, and he hated that, and he, okay? But his, his main characteristic is love. He'll never, look at this, he'll never do something, let's say, he'll never do nothing, let's say, for instance, to this lady, I'm upset with her, I'm going to, bam, I'm going to bash her, He'll never let anything happen to her 
without warning her, without letting her know something's on the way. You gotta, you gotta stop. You gotta change. You gotta turn away from what you're doing. Th- this is God. Amen. Are you with me? That that's God. He'll he'll always warn you. He'll always he'll send somebody to tell you something, or 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 he'll speak to you himself, or 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 you'll get an impression. Or something. Are you, are you with me? Women have impressions all the time. That's the Lord. Okay? Now, now listen. Listen to me. God loves you and me so much. Amen. Listen. Listen to me. You got to grab this. This is what you got to grab. He loves you so much. That he was willing, first of all, to die for you. Mm-hmm. And second of all, send the Spirit to come and dwell in you so you could make it all the way to heaven. Yeah. Are, are you with me, church? Yeah. And, and we have a tendency... Look at this. We have a tendency of blaming God for everything that happens. But, 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 but listen to me. It's not, all, it's not God. It's not always God. It's us. And we think that God should, like the Cape Crusader, you know, you know, just going through all kinds of things, you know, just to get you to, you know. No, no, listen. He lives in you, but the only way Listen to me. The only way he can help you is for you to give him control. You have to have control. That looks nice. Praise the Lord. Don't you think her hair looks nice? Uh, It matches her complexion. Give the Lord praise for this lady. Uh, are you with me? Yeah. See, see, a lot of people have, have, have uh, already, they've already made up their minds what they're going to think and believe. And because of it, they're going to miss the greatest blessings that God has in store for you. I'll give you I'll give you an illustration. I was I was uh, with my brother in New Mexico. He had a church there, and one day uh, I'm praying at an altar, and the Lord the Lord had been dealing with me to get into the ministry full time. I was working in the mines, making good money, and and then at the same time I was going out in the weekends to evangelize and so forth. But the Lord began to, to deal with me to get into the ministry, and I was kind of, kind of, you know, putting that aside for a while, you know. And so I was in a church with my brother. He was preaching. I was in the church, and I was praying for somebody on the altar way over here. And on that end of the altar was a, was a, a, a Navajo sister. She was an American Indian lady, beautiful lady. And the Holy Spirit spoke to her. And the Lord told her, I want you to go lay your hand on Ray. Put your hand on, on, on Ray. God, all, listen to me. God works through people. Amen. Obedient people. Say obedient. obedient. Okay, now listen. Why is that important? Because you cannot become obedient without submitting. An unsubmitted person that's not submitted to the Holy Spirit, an unsubmitted person becomes an independent person doing their own thing. You came here today 
You want, it, you, want, you want the word, right? You want the truth. All right? You have to know the truth. Because the truth makes you free. It, it'll, it'll open you up for more of God. Praise God. Okay? So, so imagine, imagine if, if, you, if, you, or if you're open. Now, now look at this. There are people... There are people who have given God a bad name. I'm not saying they haven't. All right? But listen to me. And they speak in tongues. Some of them are drugging, and some of them are drinking, and everything they say, well, the Lord's okay with this, man, he's still with me, and all this and that. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. He's trying to win you back. But there comes a time, listen to me, there comes a time when he'll walk away. Because he's not going to be a part of the mess. Okay? Now look at this, look at this. I'm giving you this. I want you to get this into your mind heart because this is important. If Jesus died on the cross to set us free from sin and all the stuff that is hurting our lives and soul, how could he be a part of what's killing us? It's not going to happen. You can't give God a bad name. Don't give him a bad rap, man. See? Are you with me? Anybody home? So, 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 so God's main deal is to bless you. Now look at this. I'm, I'm praying for this woman, this person over here, and that lady's praying way over there at the other end, and the Holy Spirit comes to her and tells her, go lay your hand on Ray's back. Go put your hand on him. And, and, uh, and she tells the Lord, Lord, I can't. I am a married woman. Now, you've got to understand, that's the tradition that the American Indians have. Are you with me? Amen. So she's, she went back to her seat. She's, she's like on this row right here. She's right there, standing, worshiping the Lord. And the Lord moved me. All the way across and put me right in front of her. Don't think God can do all that. So he moved me right in front of her, and all of a sudden her hand, boom, hits my back like a magnet, like a boom. It just went up. And the Lord brought a message to me. I felt that message. So mighty. And this is what the Lord told me. If you will answer my call. He says, I'm calling you. I'm calling you. I'm calling you. He says, now I'm telling you again. If you will answer my call. He says, I will bless you. Like you have never, ever, ever been blessed before. Amen. And I want to tell you, God has kept every part of his promise. But I had to keep mine. Oh, you're not hearing me. Okay, how am I going to do that? How am I going to, listen, the flesh, the Bible says the, fle the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The, the flesh wants to do its own thing. Come on, uh, let, me, let me give it to you this way. The flesh, the flesh is telling you, you're sitting here and the flesh is telling you, hey, tonight you don't have to come to church. Tonight you can... You can just sit back and watch a football game. 
or go to your sister's. Everybody will be there barbecuing, getting ready for the game. And, and, and you're all excited over that. But the spirit, if you listen to the spirit, the, that's the flesh talking. Okay? The spirit is saying to you, go worship me. Anybody here? Yes. That the 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 choice. Look, look at this. He speaks to us in those ways. Look look over here at me, because he wants to get you to a place where you follow his voice, where you follow what he's doing, what he wants, what he's saying, not not what I want, not not what I'm doing. Listen, it's. Hey, I've been here in the city 30 years, 33 years. And every time I moved from a building, I moved five times. And I only moved because God told me to move. And, and every time God told me to move, he told me where to move to. Amen. 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 Oh, you got to give him praise. I didn't, I didn't just get up one day, okay, we're moving, let's go, like the Beverly Hillbillies. Dun, 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 going to Beverly Hills, man, you know, with a, a truck full of furniture. No. No. I, I, I made it a point. I've always made it a point to listen, to wait on him. Are you with me? That's why... That's why, listen, that's why when I tell you what God is going to do, and he told me a long time ago he's going to do it, I know he's going to do it, but I've also learned how to wait on God. I wait on God. I let him do what he wants to do. Is there anybody here with me today? Yes? yes. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So, so look what he says here. I want you to go with me to the book of, of, uh, of Luke, chapter 24. We're going to read from verse 30 on down. We're going to read this kind of quick here. Okay, because I want you to see what, what, what's going on here. Okay. And, and, and first of all, he's walking with a couple of individuals. That, that were real sad because he had been crucified. Okay, but look at this. And it occurred that as he reclined that table with them, they, they asked him to stay overnight with them because it was already getting dark, so he stayed. And he's going to eat. And, he says, and, as, and it occurred that as he reclined the table with them, he took a loaf of bread and praised God and gave thanks and asked a blessing and then broke it and was given it to them. He was given it to these two individuals. When their eyes were instantly opened, when their eyes were instantly opened, the reason we do what we do, we, we say, well, I, I don't know. I don't, think, I, well, I don't think that's all real. I don't believe all this. I don't believe all this. The reason we do that is because, listen to me, we're, we're, we're not in there together with the Spirit. We're, look at me. We're listening to the flesh, to ourselves. All right? Are you with me? Just like these men's eyes were shut, so, so are many people's eyes closed. And so they see people come up here, for instance, divine healing. Somebody could get healed, and, and, and wow, well, I don't think they were sick. They were, they're just pretending. You know? No, brother, listen to me. You've got to get to know who the Holy Spirit is. All right? Okay, so look at this. And their eyes were instantly opened, and they were clearly, they clearly recognized him. You know, all of a sudden, boom, it's him. He's the one that was on the cross. And he vanished whew, right in front of them. Huh? 
Okay, let's go on. And they said to one another, we, got, we were not our hearts greatly moved and burning within us while he was talking with us on the road and as he opened and explained to us the sense of the scriptures. Let's go on. And rising up that very hour, they went back to Jerusalem where they found the 11 apostles gathered together and those who were with him. Amen. They went to go tell the other 11, hey, he's alive, man. He's we, we just had bread with him, man. He, he was sitting right there with us and disappeared. Uh, uh, is there anybody here? Huh? That, that sounds like a ghost story, uh, like Casper. Uh. But it's real. It's real. Now look at this. Look at this. Who said, the Lord really, the Lord really, you got to put that on there. The Lord really has risen and has appeared to Simon Peter. Let's go on. Then they themselves related in full what had happened on the road and how he was known and recognized by them in the breaking of bread. Let's go on. Now while they were talking about this, Jesus himself took his stand among them and said to them, Peace. Freedom from all the distresses that are experienced as the result of sin. Peace, he said. He, imagine, he's telling them, you're all tore up, you're all messed up over all kinds of stuff in your life and everything. He says, I want to help you with that. I want to I wanna be the one to make the difference in your life. Not you make the difference. He make the difference. Are you with me, church? In, in sharing with, a, with a, a, a young lady yesterday, uh, uh, you know, she was so overwhelmed with life, with, with, with problems. Her, 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 her son, her, her daughter, and they're already 21 and older, and... and, and and, and all kinds of things, and she don't have a place to live, and, and she don't know what to do, and she goes on and on, and she says, I feel like ending my life. I'm supposed to be born again. I says, no, you can't do that, sister. I said, what you got to do, let him take care of it. Hey, hey, I told her, how old are your kids? She said, oh, they're 21, 22, 23, you know, and all that. I said, oh, well, what are you doing with their problems? They're not even yours. Amen. I said, let them deal with their own, and they're going to learn how to live. Amen. And they're going to learn how to trust the Lord. Amen. But if But if you're going to deal with it, What's going to happen when you're dead and gone and the Lord Terry and, and they're left here saying, well, where's mom, man? She's taking all, all our problems. What, what are we going to do now? One greater, the Bible says, one greater than Elias is here. One greater than John the Baptist. Jesus Christ. Oh, you gotta, you gotta lift him up. And, and he says, let's go on. But they were so startled and terrified that they thought they saw a spirit. Uh, they thought they saw a spirit. Oh, yeah, she fell down. Oh, yeah, this guy did this. this, guy did this. Yeah, nah, I don't believe all that. Or somebody might say, yeah, but I don't know, man. Could be the enemy doing all that, you know? I mean, I've heard so many different things. <laughs> but yet we really don't know. We really don't know. We say a lot of stuff. But we really don't know because we have never said, okay, God, if that's really you, then show me. Do it to me. <laughs> Hello. Huh? Sister, he'll make things better for you. 
and for your husband right there. He'll make things better for you than they've ever been. He'll make things better than ever before. I'm telling you. One morning you'll wake up and you'll say, you know what, man, all those problems we had and all them arguments and all that stress and all that, it's gone. Ain't that trip? Huh? That's a blessing, man. I mean, those things alone, gee, huh? Take everything off your back. Look at this. Let's go on. And he said to them, why are you disturbed and troubled? And why do you such, do such doubts and questionings arise in your hearts? Why, why do you let this thing happen? Do you know, I want to say something to you. Do you know that Satan has used all those reasons that you have tried to put into your mind and heart to keep you from the Lord? He, he's used them so that you won't find the very answer you need for life. Oh, you need to give him praise. I'm telling you the truth. I remember one day when the Lord, the Lord was calling me, man, and I was running from God. I wasn't saved. I loved the music. My brother pastored the Spanish Assembly of God Church, but I loved their, their songs, their music. And one day I decided to go to church. I said, I'm going to go, I'm going to sneak in and sit in the back. And once, before he gets up there to preach, I'm leaving. Okay, everybody runs from Pastor Ray. <laughs> the Word. All right? Now look at this. I'm thinking like that. And all of a sudden, my sister-in-law saw me. And I think my brother told her, you know, you know they have the sign language. <laughs> you know, just like you do. You know, I see it all the time. I, saw, I, see, I see the girl get up first like she's going to the bathroom. And then about five minutes later, the guy gets up and he, he's going, but he's carrying all the luggage, the purse and everything and all that. I said, I said she's already in the car. So, so she moved me over so I wouldn't leave. And the Lord brought a message in tongues. Say it with me, a message in tongues. A message in tongues. Whether I believe it or not, it was a message in tongues. And I'm standing, and we're standing there because they were singing. And all of a sudden, brother, I'm, I'm going to tell you the honest truth. I felt him walk up to me, like right there, right there with me, this close, away from me. The presence of God was so real that I couldn't help but the tears fall by themselves. And I heard his voice. And this is what the Lord told me. He said, you know, I brought you from California over here to use you. He said, surrender to me. I want to use you. And you know what I did? What all of you do. So God used other means to get me. All right? He used other, other incidences in my life to get me. But, oh, God, I thank him. I thank him that he, he set me free. Amen. Praise God. And he said to him, why are you disturbed and trouble and why do such doubts and questionings arise in your hearts? I've seen when the Spirit of the Lord begins to take over. Some of you take off because, well, I don't get into all that. I don't believe all that. Really. Oh, oh, yeah, but you do believe in your, ch -ch 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 -ch. you believe in the fights you're into with your wife and your, uh, and your husband and, and, and all the, the, the cops coming over and, and uh, that. You believe in all that. I'd rather not have any of that and have Jesus. Jesus. Praise God. Yes, Look at this. Let's go on. See my hands and my feet, 
that it is myself feel and handle me and see for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. This is Jesus talking. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Let's go on. And well, since they still could not believe it for sheer joy and marvel, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish. And he took it and ate it before them. Then he said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything which is written concerning me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he thoroughly opened up their minds to understand the scripture. They could understand it. They could understand. All right, let's go on. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Christ of Messiah should suffer and on the third day rise from among the dead. And that repentance with a view to and as the condition of forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send you forth upon you what my Father has promised, but, they, but remain in the city of Jerusalem. Thank you for allowing us to come into your home today. I know that the Word of God blessed you richly. But I want to ask you a question today. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you don't, I want to lead you to Him. It's the greatest experience you'll ever have in your whole life. I just want you to pray this prayer with me. If you don't know him today, would you say, Lord Jesus, I confess I am a sinner and I have sinned against you. Would you please forgive me and come into my heart and wash my heart with your blood? I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, would you call us on the phone number on the screen? We want to keep in touch with you. We want to help you continue with your walk with God. Or if you need any help of some sort, would you call us? If we can help you, we want to be there for you. May God bless you till the next time. Amen.